Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern, Ned Reynolds in the studio Monday morning. Some high drama in the mountains in Colorado at that little golf tournament this weekend, <laughs> wouldn't you say? For the winner, $4 million worth of drama, as a matter of fact. And it is kind of poetic justice in a way because the winner, Keegan Bradley, was the last player to qualify for that event. There were 50 players who teed off. He was number 50. Big underdog, wins the tournament. That says a lot about the guy as a pro. First of all, he's the United States Ryder Cup captain uh, coming up for the next matches against Europe. He's the team captain, well-known by everybody. But a guy, a, a, a player who has won his share, but is, in all fairness, on the downside of his career in, in a way. Now, the it, it's not a precipitous dive by any stretch of the imagination, and certainly not because he wins this tournament almost from tee to green. Bradley led it from the start, finished 12 under par at the Castle Rock course, and that was one better than three others and worth $4 million and puts him in the final coming up this weekend in Atlanta where the winner, the winner, not the total purse, the winner pockets $25 million. bucks. That's a lot of money. That can, <laughs> that can feed a lot of folks for a while. Anyway, a nice win for Keegan Bradley, and now 30 players, 30 top point getters for the year, and that, of course, includes Scheffler and... Rory McIlroy and people of this caliber, and Keegan Bradley. He will be right there. That's awesome, man. Well, uh, good luck to all of them, and that's great. He won some money. If you like college football, man, I've got some great news for you. You've got a lot of stuff to watch coming up this week. And much of it is unpredictable, if not all of it. The uh, very first game, which was played on Saturday, was over in Dublin, Ireland, and it was an Atlantic Coast Conference game, Georgia Tech and Florida State. Florida State is number 10 in America. Big favorite over Georgia Tech, and guess who lost it? You're right, the Seminoles. It was Georgia Tech 24, Florida State 21. That is a major, major loss for the Florida State Seminoles, who were thought to be very much a, a product of the playoffs, and still might be, after all, it's the first game. It started with that big upset, but now we have Mizzou playing on Thursday. They will play Murray State from the Missouri Valley Conference. And the Bears open on Saturday night against Montana, which finished second in the nation last year. And that game will be out in Missoula, Montana. So games within 48 hours involving the state teams. Lindenwood, which is also a Division I team, is going to play Kansas in their opener. So a lot of fun coming up. It should be, should be a really, really great season. So, obviously, we had some uh, racing over the weekend as well. Uh, how'd that go? The race was Saturday night at Daytona, and this is the old Firecracker 400, which they have changed on the schedule. It's now the Coke Zero 400, and they run it just prior to Labor Day weekend. I kind of like the old Firecracker 400 myself, but that wasn't the case. This one turned into a wreck-strewn battle, won by a 23-year-older, who scores his very first ever NASCAR win. Kid's name is Harrison Burton, and he survived all of the wrecks and so forth and so on to beat out the uh, the field and win. And this is a guy who has not been rehired by the Wood Brothers racing team. He's already told he's not coming back next year. And what's he do? <laughs> he, wins. he wins the race and puts the Wood Brothers right back into the competition. It's not an odd name for the NASCAR circles. Harrison Burton's dad, Jeff Burton, calls the calls the races on television, mm -hmm. and uh, so it, it's within the family. But here's a 23 year old who gets his first win, and it is a biggie at the Coke Zero 400. Man, I could barely make it to work on time when I was 23 years old. <laughs> Cardinals. Had a good or bad weekend in Minnesota. And a mediocre one. They win uh, two and lose one, but. There's not really any ground gained on the Milwaukee Brewers who won two out of three from the Oakland A's. So the Cardinals begin play tonight, and they will play the San Diego Padres at Bush Stadium. The Cardinals are 10 games out of first. They are 32 games remaining on the schedule, 10 games out of first, and five games out of a wild card berth. It's going to take some work. Can be done. It's never over till it's over to quote the late Yogi Berra, but the Cardinals do have some work remaining, and the San Diego Padres coming in are a very good baseball team managed by Mike Schilt, former Springfield Cardinals manager, former St. Louis Cardinals manager. Well, he has the Padres, and they've got a lot of talent. Uh, Royals going into the weekend, when their first game against the Phillies, 
they're within one game of first, and now at the end of the weekend, three games back. That's because the Cleveland Guardians have yeah. suddenly gotten hot, and the yeah. Royals did lose 11-3 to yesterday to the Phillies and lost two out of those uh, three games. So, with the Royals, they get this now. Here's the, here's the moment of truth. They have a noontime and a night game in Cleveland tonight. It's a day-night doubleheader, head-to-head with the Cleveland Guardians. Two wins, and they'd be in great shape. Now, at the moment, Kansas City is a wild-card team. They are into the into the hunt, and they stand a pretty good chance of being a wild-card team. Can they catch the Guardians? Well, <laughs> they can if they take this doubleheader coming up, even if they take one game. Well, we'll see. But nonetheless, it's the Royals and the Guardians in two games tonight. Minnesota Twins are right there with the Kansas City Royals as well. Good luck to my Royals. Uh, What about the Springfield Cardinals? Springfield Cardinals played yesterday afternoon. We had that game on television. Cardinals went into the game with a seven-game winning streak. They're a red-hot ball club, but it did not sustain itself yesterday with the Tulsa Drillers coming away with a 5-3 lead. Tulsa hit the long ball, and Mike, that's a euphemism. Not only were they home runs, they were gargantuan home runs. One of them cleared the pine trees out in left field, and that is, that's almost a 470-480 foot wallop. Anyway, a couple of key home runs for the Tulsa Drillers, and they win the game 5-3. to three. Springfield had chances to win, but just like in any baseball, the stars were not aligned the right way, and it didn't go. But the Cardinals are in great shape heading into the playoffs. They have a road series coming up this week with the Wichita wind surge in Kansas. But the Cardinals are in very little jeopardy as far as the playoffs are concerned. They're a good team and they're playing well. You know, something must have happened if we're bringing up the Little League World Series. But hopefully by now you've seen that incredible final moments of the game for obviously the Florida team. But I will say the camaraderie that was shown by both sides after that went down was what it's all about. But uh, it was a crazy finish to that series. It was Chinese Taipei that the Lake Mary, Florida team was playing. Chinese Taipei is the official name for Taiwan, which is just (laughs) right there, the Chinese mainland, except that they are very much not a part of the government there in the United States backs them. But that's the political side of it. The kids played pretty good baseball, came into yesterday's game undefeated, had not lost. Well, the Little League Baseball World Series is double elimination up to a point, and then one loss and you're gone. Well, this was the championship game. This was for everything. Little League title, national champions, international champions for that matter, and Lake Mary, Florida won it in extra innings in the eighth had to come from behind to tie the game at 1-1 to in the sixth inning. There are only six innings. That's all they play in Little League Baseball. So on it went into extra innings. And in the eighth inning, the Chinese Taipei team committed a throwing error at first base. Around comes the winning run. Lake Mary, Florida is the Little League World Series and World Champions with a 2-1 to win back in the United States. And this is chauvinistic, but where it belongs. <laughs> I will ask you, though, watching the video of that call for the pinch bunt, would you have made that call at Absolutely. that point? Absolutely. Man. This is, that's called small ball, and I thought the Americans played it very well. Saw it, saw it manifested yesterday in the Springfield Cardinals game, a squeeze bunt yeah. by the uh, Tulsa Drillers. That doesn't happen very often. It should happen more. Maybe this opens the doors, and maybe the pendulum is swinging the other way. I'll tell you what, that kid who squeezed that bunt down did a perfect job. That was textbook, and congratulations to the team from Florida. Ned, you have a great Monday. I'll see you tomorrow.